All right, guys, here we go for video number two. We're going to connect today to yesterday. And to start off by doing this connection, we're going to look at the word colonization and with that, what a colony is. Now, a colony is a group of people in one place ruled by a parent country elsewhere. So in this illustration, you have individuals coming from uh, Great Britain or England traveling across the ocean to what we now know as Virginia, and they set up their first colony. So they set up camp here and they try to survive. So you have a group of people who are from a foreign land trying to, um, trying to survive in the wilderness, wilderness of the New World in what we now know as Virginia. Now this first colony that was established in the New World, uh, well first successful colony, was called Jamestown. Now you have people coming over before people from Jamestown got here, but they all died, all right? They were not successful in setting up a colony that will last for a long time. So Jamestown Colony and what we now know as Virginia was the first successful colony. Now you have these two items here at the bottom. For Jamestown, they had to create a government and then they were sent over here to make money. All right, so I'm gonna go with the first one where they had to create a government. The government that they created was called the House of Burgesses. Now this is the first form of self-government that we're going to find in the colonies. Now this was a representative democracy. As Jamestown became successful, more and more people came in, so their numbers increased dramatically. So with that, they started to have people represent individuals in government. And so whatever a group of people wanted, these people would represent them in government. And so this is where we have a representative democracy, a group of people representing the will of others who are below them or who elect them to a specified position. Now the other thing about Jamestown that you need to know is that they were sent over here to make money. Now the people in England knew that the New World uh, had all these natural resources and raw materials that they could use. So the people of Jamestown were sent over here to collect these raw materials and resources. So they were sent over here to make money. So when they were sent over here, they figured out how to grow what we know as tobacco. Now tobacco was sent back to England where people enjoyed this new item called a cigarette at a much higher volume than they did before. So the people of Virginia, they became rich or they became profitable, not rich, but they became profitable and they were able to sustain their lives over here because of growing tobacco. Now you also have another group of people who would later come over to the New World. These are the people who follow the story of Thanksgiving. So we're going to have our Puritans and Pilgrims. Now back in England, they were not allowed to practice their religion freely. All right. They didn't necessarily go along with the flow of which the king wanted. And remember, a king is, a, is an authoritarian leader. So whatever he says goes. If he says you can't practice your religion, then you should not practice your religion because you're going against him. And then he may do something to you. So to avoid being persecuted by the king and the people who work for the king, they said we have to leave England and we have to try to find our own way. So they heard about people going over to the New World for business purposes. They decided to go over to the New World to practice their religion freely. So they left England to avoid religious persecution. Now this story all follows the Thanksgiving story. When they came over here, just like Jamestown, they had to figure out how to establish their own government. So the Puritans or the Pilgrims came up with the Mayflower Compact. Now, if you look at the word Mayflower, that word sounds familiar. It's not the seafood restaurant I'm talking about, but it's the ship in which they sailed over in. Okay? So the Mayflower Compact was signed and created aboard the Mayflower on their way over to the New World. All right? So when they got to the New World, they formed Plymouth Colony, and while they were on the boat, they created and established the Mayflower Compact. Now the Mayflower Compact was established to create just and equal laws for the individuals who were going to be living in this Plymouth colony. The Mayflower Compact was different in that it was a form of direct democracy. All the men who came over on the Mayflower, they had the power. They would meet in what we call town hall meetings, so they would get together in a central location and they would discuss and vote on the issues that impacted everybody else. So as more and more people came, or more and more men came, they all got to participate in direct democracy, and they would meet with the remaining or other people, and they would all discuss the issues that would plague or that would affect uh, the Plymouth Colony. So with direct democracy, all men met and they could vote. So women were not allowed to vote. 
or make decisions. Now yesterday's video talked about citizenship and citizens. Now with citizenship, you get rights, privileges, and you have duties you must fulfill. As we get to talk about present day America, we're gonna get into the duties that a citizen has. Now a citizen, they get these rights, privileges, and duties because they give their loyalty to the government. Now, this is what pilgrims were mostly seeking. They were seeking the idea of citizenship where they would have rights, privileges, and duties, all right? They're living under a king who's not allowing them to practice their religion freely, so he's taking away one of their rights. So the idea of democracy becomes really important in the new world and the colonies because now people who are considered citizens have rights, privileges, and duties. When you're under the rule of a king or a monarch, you're not considered a citizen. You're, you're considered a subject. You just got to do whatever they say. So this is something that everybody wanted, the idea of citizenship. Now, citizenship is a two-way street. All right. Look at this illustration at the bottom. This is supposed to be a street. So citizens give their loyalty to the government, and in return, the government gives them protection. So the government must protect the citizens, and if the citizens feel protected, they should have no problem giving their loyalty so they can have rights, privileges, and duties. Now, we'll go more deeply into this on tomorrow's class about rights, privileges, and duties. Today's class, excuse me, um, on today's class, we looked at the rights or the protections that a government gives. So, remember, government gives protection, citizens give loyalty. Now, if you're wondering, why did the colonies have to establish a government? That's a very important question. On the first slide for a colony, you're, it says that it's a group of people in one place that are ruled by a parent country. The most common parent country that sent ships over to the New World or to the colonies was England. Now, England really didn't care about what happened once the people got over there. Going back to Jamestown specifically, the only reason the people of Jamestown were sent over to the New World or to the colonies to establish the colony was to make money. So the European king or the English king practiced salutary neglect. Now we're going to look more into this um, on tomorrow's class on Thursday, what the idea of salutary neglect is. But the basic definition that you need to know is that the king said colonists did not have to follow English laws. So if you're saying that the colonists, once they get over to this new world, they don't have to follow the laws that they've been following, then those colonists are over there by themselves, so they have to make their own laws. So salutary neglect is when the colonies were able to do whatever they wanted to do as far as making their laws and forming their government because the king said, I'm taking my hands off, you guys are over there on your own, so you do what you need to do. Just as long as we make money, we're cool. So salutary neglect is what the king practiced when he, was, when he was sending people over to the New World. Now, the people of England also practiced the idea of mercantilism. Mercantilism deals with the economy. So in mercantilism, the people of England, especially the king, said the colonies only existed for their cheap resources, for their cheap raw materials. So in the idea of mercantilism, colonies had to sell their materials back to the place that they came from at a low price. And then their parent country in which they sold the product to would sell them a finished product back at a much higher price. So in this, the colonies were able to survive, just they, they struggled. But the people who they were sending their raw materials to, they were able to flourish because they were making all this profit so let's say the people of Virginia in Jamestown sent a huge shipment of tobacco back to England, right? Now we all know that tobacco is used to make cigarettes. So once the tobacco got to England, the English would sell cigarettes back to the people of Jamestown in Virginia at a much higher price. Thereby, the people in the colonies, their money would decrease and go down, but the people in England their money would go up, they would make more money. So in the idea of mercantilism, the colonies only existed as a source of cheap 
raw materials in order to ship back to their parent country and so the parent country can make more money off of them. So that's not really fair. So we're going to look at in the next video what happens after these two ideas really affect the colonies. They make their own laws and they know they only exist as a source of cheap raw materials. Now that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, we'll look at it in class tomorrow.